What is up, guys? It's Zach Wright. I hope you guys are having a very happy and productive day. It is a cold, rainy day in Cleveland. Again. But we're going to make the most of it, because that's what we do. Damn, my eyebrows need done. Woo, Caitlin! 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 Yeah, um, we're going to have to wait on that. She's kind of at work getting that bread. Yeah, hi. Can I speak to my girlfriend, please? All right, yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, Kate. Yeah, um, I'm kind of going to need my eyebrows done. Um, unfortunately, I was born with the wooliest eyebrows on freaking planet Earth. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I understand. I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I understand that you're at work getting that bread. All right. All right, I'll see you later. All right, bye. Hello? Yes, I said love you. Yes, of course. Oh, no, you definitely hung up first, and you just missed me saying it. Yep, love you. All right. Anyways, guys, I'm going to tell you guys all about my story today. I'm sure you guys are all wondering who the fuck is this kid. So I'm gonna tell you guys today, make sure right now you hit that like button, show some love in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe. It supports the dream, it supports the vision, it supports all of us, let's go. We're gonna sit down for this one. All right guys, what's up? What is up? All right, the jump in was a terrible idea, I'm sorry guys, what is up? Thank you guys for tuning in. Appreciate you guys so much. This doesn't happen without you guys, but without further ado, I wanna get into my story last video i showed you guys where i'm from where i lived and that was to just display to you guys that i am also just like you guys and i think it's important to look back on it a year from now i can scroll back to my first video ever and that first video will show exactly where i started from and it will just inspire me it'll motivate me more it'll bring pure joy to me that i had a vision and i had a mindset and i wanted something so bad that i went out and i got it and i didn't stop until i got it i didn't listen to what anybody told me i read i learned i networked I, I engaged with others and I made my dream come true and I think that's very important for all of you guys to have something like that that can bring you back to remind you to the first time the first day that you started this and it'll be a great measurement to see how far you guys have come so in this video I'm gonna tell you guys all about my story who I am who is Zach Wright I can tell you for sure Zach Wright isn't really feeling this whole hat backwards thing so all right now we're cool I'm 24 I grew up in a city called Brunswick Ohio Brunswick, 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 man. I feel like the people in Brunswick, I feel like most people couldn't really see the dream. Like all they could see was Brunswick. It's one of those cities, and I don't know if most people's hometowns are like this. It's one of those cities that I feel like a lot of people get trapped in and generations of generations and generations of people end up staying there. Like I had friends whose parents went to Brunswick High School. Their parents went to Brunswick High School. It's just a reoccurring hometown where I feel like people just live and stay and they thrive in Brunswick. I feel like people in Brunswick, most people can't see the dream. Some people can, some people can think outside of that box and some people just can't. But I feel like some people, very few, can see the dream. Some people, very few, again, could think outside of the box. They could think outside of Brunswick. They saw the bigger picture that there was more to life than being in this city. So. The vibe there, I would say the vibe there, most people hated it. I feel like most people didn't like Brunswick. They didn't like the people. There was a bunch of drama. Everyone talked shit about each other. It was probably just your typical small town high school drama. Even before high school and after high school, things just never changed. People just stayed stuck in high school. They stuck inside of the popularity, all that other bullshit, which I'm... Again, I'm pretty sure that goes for most people's hometowns. But I feel like most people that are from Brunswick, they don't even say like, oh, hey, where are you from? It's like, I'm from Cleveland. Like most people don't even rep Brunswick. A lot of people don't even say it. They don't even claim that they're from there. Everyone from Brunswick, from the suburbs of Cleveland, we're about 20 minutes out. Everybody reps Cleveland. I'm from Cleveland. I'm from Cleveland. I'm from Cleveland. It's like nobody's from their individual cities. We're all just from Cleveland, which is dope. I love it here. I love Cleveland. I love this city. I love the people. It means a lot to me to be from here. People from Cleveland are hardworking, blue collar, your typical, nothing is given to us, nothing is handed to us, and everything is earned. And I know that's cliche, shout out LeBron, my boy, but, but it's a very true statement. People around here are very hardworking. They dedicate themselves to their job and they dedicate themselves to their work. And I feel like a lot of people out here, not all of them, but most of them definitely take a lot of pride in their work. They take a lot of pride in what they do and they work really, really hard. Let's talk about me as a kid. Zach Wright as a kid, I was very, I just knew that I was gonna be something special, that I was gonna do something big and that I was destined for greatness. The first dream I ever chased, I got really into music. 
And at the time, I was really into heavy metal music. I started a band with my day one homies. Shout out all of you guys. You know who you are. You guys were the first people that I ever chased a dream with as a collaborative effort, and it was awesome. I will never forget those times, some of the best times I ever had. Man. So that taught me a lot about, that gave me the taste of it. We played a lot of shows outside of, of our city, in our city. We had kids coming up to us saying, oh my God, like I've been trying to see you guys for months now. I'm so happy that you guys are here. Like that was the first real taste of like, not success money-wise, but success. Like people looked up to you. People were inspired by what you were doing. They liked what you were doing and they let you know that. And that was amazing. So after the band days, I started to get into hip hop. This is like when Drake and Mac Miller and Machine Gun Kelly, the mixtape days. Then I was really inspired by a friend of mine, Billy Cumming, AKA Bizze The Last, AKA Benadryl Bill. Go check him out on Twitter, he is hilarious. You will laugh your ass off, I promise you. That's my boy. So I sent him a message and I was like, hey man, you're extremely inspiring. Like, let me write something for you and I want you to see what I have. So I wrote a verse, sent it to him, wrapped it for him and he was like, dude, this is awesome. This is super cool, like I want you. And he was actually starting like a group at the time and he was like, I want you and me and a couple other people, let's start writing, let's start recording and let's chase that dream. So we actually collaborated with Connor Flynn. Connor Flynn is a day one homie, AKA C Flynna. I am beyond grateful for meeting Connor and all of the people and blessings that have come along with that. Billy actually asked me to do a song with Connor. Now Connor at the time was probably one of the biggest names in Brunswick. He was actually the first Brunswick rapper as people like to call them. He had a name for himself. He had some buzz. After that, me and Connor just clicked. We became really good friends. Through Connor, I met a lot of people that I'm still extremely close to to this day, like day one homies, dream chasers. I love you guys. You guys mean the world to me. That's just when like life for me just kind of got put into perspective. I was getting older. I was graduating high school. Things were changing for me. I was trying to like find my purpose. I was trying to find my vibe. I found like my true loves, not person-wise, because obviously that's Kaylin. Okay. But I found her later. But I found my true loves onto like what I'm into, sports, music, dream chasing, like like the bigger picture, it all kind of fell into perspective for me. While I was doing that, I got involved in a little like network marketing. I was trying to like make some money on the side to kind of like fund this music career that I was trying to go after. And at the same time, I was going to school at Tri-C for music production. The music thing, I don't know. It just didn't end up working out the way we all thought it was going to. We had a group and a lot of people in that group, we all just kind of split off. We all just kind of like went our separate ways. Some people went to college, some people did this, some people did that, some people got full-time jobs and careers. I linked up with a buddy of mine who was a graphic designer and I was like, yo, I need some sort of cover photo for my Facebook page. So he put Zach Wright and he had like my YouTube and my Twitter and he was like, do you want anything else to go in here? And I said, Next to my name, throw live, dream, achieve. And that just kind of became a personal slogan that I just lived my life by forever. Like I always thought back to it. I always repped it. I always hashtagged it or something along those lines. It just became a personal slogan for just me. So the LDA slogan and the graphic design work that kind of created this whole thing, that actually started in, in 2012. In 2016, when my calves won the championship and beat the Golden State Warriors, man, one of the best days of my life. I wish I could vlog that and relive that day because that day was fucking insane. I love this city because of that. After that whole entire thing, I got extremely inspired. The Cavs won the championship, LeBron, Kyrie, Kevin Love, Tristan, like the whole, the whole crew, everyone was just inspired, everyone was happy. And it was that sense of like accomplishment as a city, like we, not only did LeBron and Kyrie and Kevin Love achieve an NBA championship, but we achieved it too. Like we all took so much pride in that. And that was extremely inspiring for me that it's like, if you put in the work and you believe in something and you speak it into existence, like LeBron James did, you can win a championship. And the championship is the end goal of achieving your dream. So I actually had this crazy idea that I was gonna start this clothing company called LDA Lifestyle. It was gonna be a lifestyle brand that was gonna inspire people to achieve their dreams and go after what they want in life. And I was gonna send letters out to all the Cavs players and like that was gonna be my way of blowing up. And then reality hit and it didn't really work out that way. That wasn't really possible. That was a lot harder 
to do than what I thought it was going to be. So two years passed, right? And in these two years, I met Caitlin. I love you, babe. I met Caitlin, and she's awesome. I love her to death. She's a love of my life. She's my rock. She's everything. I love you so much. But anyways, I met Caitlin, and I was just still working. Like, I wasn't really doing much, and we went on vacation with her family to North Carolina, which is the spot, by the way. And um, I was sitting there in a nice house, pool in the backyard. You're right on the ocean. It was just so vibey. The vibes were just insane. They were, they were incredible. They were awesome. And I just got so inspired that I was like, you know what? I'm going to turn this LDA lifestyle into a reality. I made the Instagram for it. I made an email for it all while we were on vacation. I hit up my buddy, Evan, who is a fantastic dude. I've been friends with him since I was like 14. He's a graphic designer. I'm going to plug him. I'm going to shout him out. Follow him on Instagram, check him out. He's that dude. His work is insane. So I hit him up and we just had a conversation and I was like, hey man, I have this crazy idea. I wanna start my own clothing brand. I'm gonna tell you all about it. Let's link up and I come back. So the day that we came back, that day he came over, rode his bike to my house and we had a conversation for like two hours. And in that conversation, we were actually teaching each other stuff that we didn't even know. But at the end of it, he was like, dude, this is an insane idea. I love what you're trying to do. It's awesome. Let's do it. So we mocked up some designs for the first two drops. After that, I kind of linked with some people, networked with some people that I knew, just trying to kind of get the idea, like what I was going to do, how I was going to market it, how I was going to use Instagram. I was listening to podcasts, reading books, anything like that, just to try and like find my way onto like how I was going to get this entire thing off the ground. Lo and behold, we end up in just three months working with futuristic, I'm from Cleveland, Screwface Gene, Jonathan Blevins, um, Sir Yacht, and then on top of that, we get a whole squad who believes in the vision too. A graphics guy, photographer, videographer, editor, manager, visuals, like everybody close to me, my closest friends, everyone who I care about, they're all doing something for me. The LDA, we're a squad. This shit is coming, guys. It's crazy. But anyways, I'm getting sidetracked too much. I always get scatterbrained. This is fucking insane. So that's my story. That's where the vision started. That's who I am, where I came from, and kind of like what I'm about. Thank you guys so much for watching. Slap that like button, guys. Comment, show some love. Make sure you subscribe. Support this dream. Support this vision. Support millions of people out there who need this, who need the inspiration, who need confidence and belief in themselves. Support that. Subscribe to the channel. Let's get this thing rolling, guys. Love you.